Joseph. That's the King Collins. He had a wife, life, housewife, and a midwife. His name is Charles, Mr. Eddie. Eddie, 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 Eddie calls his dad, don't you worry. One fine day, black prophet Terry made his way to the king. Now very steady, you ready? No, my head's kind of sweaty, kind of worried not to go. He's like the moon, look, fine king, having heard my stories of arms. Then he made it go to high floor, along with his mom, has fought. Just woman. What do you know about the pride that comes with dealing power? Your brother has committed the act of treason, something a loyal and just king would never do. And for that, he must bear the consequences. Oh, Polynesius, don't pretend like you're innocent. Openly defying the official war of the king, raging war against the king. Is there really need for this childish behavior of yours? And due to the amount of disgrace and shame you've become in our family name? Don't you dare blame me for the defamation of a family name into place? We had the same agreement. I gave you the opportunity to rule Thebes first, and instead of obediently stepping down at the end of your term, you decided to exploit your opportunity. Thebes is my kingdom, and you are the only one who's trying to snatch it away from its rightful owners. And you are the only one who's trying to disrupt the balance I've created for this fine kingdom of mine. And after all of this, you are calling me selfish? Oh, Polynesius, come back to your senses and just admit your wrongdoings. So you want to talk about senses? Come, let's fight now and see who's the body one. No, Come brother, brother, politicians, stop. Can the two of you think of nothing but yourself? Hear how incredibly selfish you sound? After all our family has been through, with father gorging his own eyes out and mother taking her own life, can the two of you not find it in yourselves to be civil just this once? And if not for yourself, can you at least stop this madness for his and I? You have no idea what you're putting us through. Brothers, we are all the family that is left right now. Please don't start something that you know you will repent the consequences of. Oh, listen to the two of you just ramble on. Brainwashed by your brother. What have you ever done for our kingdom? Nothing. You do not know what does it feel like to be the king. And you, you do not know what is beneficial. 
sacrificial for my Thebes. Stop pretending like you know what's going around here. You all have no right to impose your words against me, which do not even belong in this world. Antiochus, there's no need for such a harsh tone, brother. You may think that we don't, but we understand everything that you're going through. Don't you understand? You understand what it feels like to be betrayed by your own brother? To be let down by your own blood? No, Antigone. You will never understand the humiliation that I'm going through right now. Brother, we are not negating your feelings right now. We are simply trying to offer our humble advice. Me and Antigone think what's best for you. And we simply do not think your current plan is the best course of action right now. No, 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 no. All of you, stop interfering in my state affairs. Enough is enough. This wall is the only way to decide who is the worthy king. Polynesian, can't you see? This is exactly what Cleon wanted. He wanted to see you in Antiochus, torn apart. He wanted to see our kingdom in shambles. He wanted to see devastation in every corner of Thebes. And Why? you're giving it to him. Why must you only target me, Antigone? If you go through with this war, you'll have handed him the title of the king as well. He's going to exploit every opportunity he gets. So I beg you, please don't give him one. Why must you always target me? We will never, never mention a word to Diphilus. It's like you're solely blaming me as the cause of this war. Well, you are. If you would have complied and listened to my instructions, I wouldn't have made such a rash decision. Say, Polynesius, you want to be the king, right? Why don't you find us a solution to this problem? You got us into the first place. You can leave the rest to me. Stop with the imbecile words, Ridiculous. Pretending like you're the worthy one. After all, Kiran is an uncle. He would know betray us. Oh, believe me, brother. They have been suspicious about Creon for quite some time now. And you will just be providing him with more ammunition against us. We all have suffered enough. Please end your madness here. No, it's me. Too much has happened for me to keep simply give up on something I worked so hard for my entire life. After all, you're my sister. I expect you to understand. Polynesius, don't be dramatic. You and I, we both know how disgraceful king you've become. Not taking things into accountability, getting emotional over the littlest things. You are not worthy indeed. Antiochus, must you instigate him like this? No, Antigone, it's fine. I may have reconsidered previously, but your brother's pompous and condescending behavior is something I can no longer endure. This wall must and will commence, and there is nothing that either of you can do about it. Brother.
countrymen, I have the honor to inform you all that our ship of state has finally reached the harbor. Despite strong, guided by divine wisdom, I have called you all here because I know I can trust you. Our past king, King Lao and King Iripus, were honored by your loyalty. But sadly, their sons, Ichiocles and Polynesius, made a tragic end in the war. Now, I am the new king. I know that trust takes time. I do not like leaders who are afraid to do what's right or who care more about their personal priorities. If I see my country in trouble, I'll speak up. I'll never work with those who want to harm us. About Oedipus' sons, Ethiopolis, who fought for us, will be honored. But, on the other hand, Polynesius, who tried to destroy us, won't be buried. It's a warning to retaters. This decision is wise. Under my rule, loyalty to the state will be the most important thing. Those who care about me will earn my respect in life and honor in death. That is my will. Make sure that you do your part. But we, we are old men. Let the younger ones carry it out. I do not mean that. The sentries have been appointed. Then what is it, Creon, that you want us to do? You should give no respect to whoever breaks this law. Only a crazy man is in love with death. And death it is. But yet, money talks. And the wisest have sometimes been known to count a few coins to many. You understand? Yes, yes my lord. All the countrymen of this fine kingdom are with you, Creon. Thank you. 
asked the dead for forgiveness, but I am helpless. I must yield to those in authority, and I think that it is dangerous business to always be meddling. If that is what you think, I shall not want you, even if you ask to come. You have made your choice, you can be whatever you want to be. But I am going to bury the brother that I love. If it means death, I consider that crime holy. I shall lie with him in death. He shall be as dear to me as I wish to him. It's me. It's not the dead. It's the living who make the longest demands. We die forever. You? You can do whatever you want because apparently the laws of God mean nothing to you. They mean a great deal to me. I just don't have the strength to break rules that were made for the public's good. That must be a excuse, I suppose. But as for me, I'm going to go bury the brother that I love. Anthony, I'm so afraid for you. You need not be. You have this have to consider after all. But, but no one must hear of this. You can tell no one. I keep it a secret. I promise. Or oh, tell it. Tell everyone. Think how they'll hate you when it all comes out. If they learn that you knew about it all the time. He was so fiery. You should be cold and fear, Anthony. Perhaps. But I'm only doing what I must. But can you do it? I say that you cannot, Anthony. Very well. When my son gives up, I shall do no more. Well, impossible things should not be tried at all then. Go away, sleep. I shall be hating you, you soon. And, and the death will do. For you are not a fool. Make me a foolish man. I am not afraid of the danger. danger. If it means death, it, it shall not be no other death. death. Death without honor. Go, go then. If you feel that you must, you, you are unwise. unwise. But a lawyer will be needed. Something to just, and hey, look, come here, come here. 
You little guitar boy. You're everything that I needed. This dead body. Listen, we're gonna go. Three, two, one. Oh, Polynesians, why do you have to be dead? Um, I haven't seen my kids in 20 years because the three young kids giving me orders and I don't want to do them. Uh, I just want to go to sleep because you have been way too much and I haven't slept at all. So if anyone comes and tries to bury you, just give me signs. But I can't go to sleep because I have to be here protecting you. And I'm just gonna sit here, make sure you're protected. Well, I'm doing it. Go to
say that I'm out of breath can you? Because every time I think about what I have to tell you, I feel like going back. Yeah, there's a voice that tells me, you fool, don't you know that you're walking straight into trouble? And then another voice, well, if you don't tell Kriyam first, it's gonna be way worse for you. So, good sense went out. They said, I hope that it was good sense that went out. Because as they say, whatever is gonna happen is going to happen to me, boys. But if you were to say, I did not it, I did not know who did it. You must not punish me for what someone else has done. A comprehensive defense, more effective. Perhaps if I knew its purpose. Come, what is it? A, a dreadful thing I, I did it. Well then. The, the dead body, the Polynesius, out there, someone, and you dust on the slimy flesh, someone has given him burial that way, and gone. You man who dared to do this? I swear, I didn't know, you must believe me. Listen, the ground was dry. No sign of digging. No, not even a wheel track on the dust. No trace of anyone. It was when they relieved it to us this morning. That, that someone, the, the, the corporal pointed to it. And there it was, the strangest look. You see, the body just covered with a cloth. Not really buried, but as if they buried it just enough so where the body can receive the ghost piece. And what a scene there was. This soldier saying that that soldier did it. That soldier is saying, saying that this soldier did it. We were ready to pick up hot, hot iron in our hands. Walk to the fire. Swear to the gods. But it was not I. I did not do this. And when it came to it all, there was something said that made everyone silent. Someone had to go tell Creon. So we rolled the dice. And the bad luck fell onto me. No happier to be here than you are to have me because nobody, I mean nobody likes the person who brings bad news. I have been wondering, King, could it have been that God has done this? No, stop. The gods, intolerable. How did they stop them? Try to loot their temples, burn their images, or even this whole state and the laws with it? Do you think that God's now honoring bad men? No. Since the very beginning, Stiff-necked anarchists have schemed against me in alleys. They've bribed my own people to do this thing. Money. There is nothing in the world more demoralizing than money. Go. Find the man. Bring him here to me. Alive. Or else, your death will be the least of your problems. I'll train you up. Alive. And there'll be a certain ways to make you safe. Do you understand? King, 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 may I speak? Your very voice distresses me. Are you sure that it is my voice? And not your conscience? My God, he wants to analyze me now. It is not what I say, but what has been done, that hurts you. You talk too much. Maybe, but I've done nothing. Sold your soul for some silver. That's all you've done. It is so dreadful when the right judge judges wrong. Your figures of speech may entertain you now, but unless you find me the man, you'll get a little profit from him in the end. And remember, I need one more person to guard the dead body. Bring me a man. Bring me a man. I like nothing better than bringing him the man. But at any rate, I am safe. And I quit this job. I'm finding a new king.
What has happened? Why have you come back so soon? Okay, a man should never be too sure of anything. I could have sworn that you'd not see me here again. But with those terrible threats of yours, your anger frightened me so. But how could I tell them that I'd be able to solve this case so soon? No dice throwing or anything like that. This time, I would have been too glad to come here and tell you this news. Here is a guilty one. Take her away then. Judge her, punish her. Do whatever you want. My job here is done. But this is Antigone. Why have you brought her here? She was burying him, I tell you. Is this the truth? I saw it with my own eyes. Can I say more? The details. Come, tell me quickly. It was like this. After those terrible threats of yours. King, King, dead body, dead body, body. You got to worry. Dust the dust away from the body. The flesh is taking by now. So, he sat on ahead, he went guard and kept guard. No napping happened until the white dancer whirled up into the skies above. Then, suddenly, a storm of dust erupted from the ground. The sky vanished, the plane went down with all its trees. And in the stinking dust, we closed our eyes and we endured it. <laughs>
Was he not your brother too? Yes, just like Polynesius. And you insult his memory. And that guy would not say that I insult it. He would. But you honor a traitor as much as him. He's our brother. Traitor or not, but equal in blood. He made war in his country. Ethiopia defended it. Nevertheless, there are honors you all the day. But not the same for the wicked as for the just. Creon, Creon. You are perfect to with the gods, oh wicked. An enemy is an enemy. Even dead. It is in my nature to join in love, not hate. Go join them then. If you must have your love, go find it in hell. You too, it's me. You confess your share in this crime or deny it. Answer me. Yes. If you will let me say so, I am guilty. No, it's me. You have no right to say so. You will not help me, and I will not have you help me. But now I know what you meant, and I am here to join you to take my share of punishment. The dead man and the man who ruled the dead know whose act this was. Words are nothing. You will not accuse me and the genie. I want to die with you. I do have a duty that I must discharge to the dead. You should not justify death by sharing it. But what do I care for life when you are dead? As Creon, you are hanging in his opinion. You are laughing, laughing at me. Why, Antony? It's a joyless laughter, Ismail. But can I, can I do nothing? Yes, save yourself. I shall envy you. There are those who praise you. I will honor too. But we are equally guilty. No, Ismail. You are alive, but I belong to the dead. Gentlemen, gentlemen, gentlemen. I beg you to observe these girls. One has just now lost her mind, and the other one, it seems like I never had a mind at all. Leave teaches the steadiest of minds to waver, King. Your son, he did, and he assumed guilt with the guilty. But how could I go on living without her? You are. She's already dead. But you are all done bright. I want no childish talk of marriage here. You are the same. How your father wronged you? I told you, no childish talk of marriage here. No, death will do that for me. Then she must die. You dazzle me, and you both talk too much. Guys, take them away. And you can eat. But they are, but women, and even men are scared. And you can eat. Clear for me, and I obey you. No marriage to me means more than your continuing wisdom. Good. This is the way to behave. Subordinate everything else. This is what every man pays for in his life to get a son like you, who obeys his father, who respects his father's decision, and hating his father's enemies. But if a son fails him, then what has he, father, but to trample upon himself? Haman, listen to me. Do not lose your head over that girl. Let her find her husband in hell. We don't care. Out of all the people living here in this city, only she was the one who broke the laws and disobeyed my orders. You come with me. Remember one thing: no woman shall seduce us. If he must lose, let's lose to a man at least. It's a woman stronger than us. Father, I know I'm your son. I may not have the wisdom, the experience, or such power as a great king as you. But father, I've heard whispers around the kingdom. People say that she's going to die one of the most gruesome deaths. For what? An honorable act, Father. She went out all alone with her brother's grief. She put a cloth over his face. Is that a crime? She buried him. Was that a crime? She saved him from scavenger dogs and vultures from shredding him apart. Was that a crime, Father? Don't be unchangeable. Don't let the devil take control of you. Amen, amen, amen. You didn't get right to stand up for an anarchist. No, I pay no respect to criminals. Then she's not a criminal for you. The city proposes to teach me how to rule. And the city proposes to teach me how to rule. Ah, look, who's talking like a boy now? It's my voice is the one giving orders in this whole city. It is no city that takes orders from one voice. The state is the king. If it is a desert. My God, this boy it seems like he's being sold out to a woman. If you are a woman, my concern is only for you. Your concern? In a public room with your father? No. 
More like your public bro. On justice. With justice. When whatever I do is within my rights. You have no rights to trample upon God's right. Fool. Adolescent fool. Taken in by a woman. You'll never see me taken by anything vile. Every single word you say is just for her. And for you. And for me. And for the gods under beneath us. She'll never marry her while she lives. And she must die. And you cause another death. Another! Have you lost your senses? Is this an open threat? I give no threat to emptiness. I swear you'll regret this superior tone of yours. If you're not my father, I'll call you perverse. You girls are fool. Don't play at words with me. Oh, sorry. You prefer silence? My God, by all the gods in the heavens above us, I swear you shall, Moses. I swear you shall. God, bring the woman out. Let her die in front of his eyes. No, she will not die here, King. And you will not see my face again. Tell him to or dream to do more than a man can. He shall not save these girls from death. These girls? You must sentence them both? No, you're right. I'll not kill the one whose hands are clean. But Antigone, take her, go, lock her in the stone vault. Then she'll pray to the underworld gods. But then, at one point of time, she'll realize that it's too late to change the destiny. Is the very light of the sun is cold. 
children. One must have neither love nor lamentation, no song but silence. Your neighbor should die lamentation be put of death, then men would be singing forever. Take her. Go. You know your orders, right? Take her to the vault and leave her alone there. I don't care if she lives or dies. Call for Or ours. Our hands are clean then. All two virgin bride in eternal rock. Tomorrow, I shall be with my own again. But by symphony, the thing goes on the ground when it me. I shall see my father, my mother, you, and Polynicious. Dearest Polynicious, since it was my hand that cleaned him and wore the ritual wife, and my punishment is death before time. You men know in your hearts, I shall have done no wrong. I have done no sin before God. But even if I have, I shall know the truth in death. But if the sin lies upon me all, who does me, then I pray. But if punishment shall be for my own. O passionate heart, unkill me, or make him steal by the same wings. And God shall have a good reason to regret that delay. That voice you have, you have no reason to think it's a voice of death. I can give you no reason to think that you're mistaken. Thief! And you, my father's God, and you look of thief. You see me now, the last unhappy daughter of a lion of kings. Your king led to death, but you shall remember the things I suffer in a one man's hand, because I will not conquer the laws of heaven. Come, let us wait no longer. What 
lower he is at the killer man who is already dead. What good is it to fight with the court? You should be able to yield for your own good. Yield for your own good! Ah, Tyrishis, fortune tellers like you have been bothering me all the time. Let God send his eagle to get Polynesius' body, but I still won't cheat. So go into business and make money, but I won't change my wife. It's a very sad thing to see. People like you sell themselves to gold. Ah, Sion, is there no man left in this world? Do what? You are sick, Sion. You are deadly sick! You are deadly sick! As you say, I'm not in the place to challenge a prophet. And yet, you have said my prophecy is for sale. The generation of prophets has always loved gold. And the generation of kings has always loved brass. You forget yourself. You're talking to your king. I know it. You're the king because of the king. You have certain skin, but you're sold out. King, you will try and the words that... That what? Tell them. Tell them. Only remember, I will not pay for them. No, you'll find them too costly. Whatever you say, that's not going to change my will. Then take this. Take this to your heart. Take this to your heart. King. You have kept from the God's fifth child that is this. You sent one child to the grave before she was dead. And the other, dead, denied the grave. The dark heart of hell will terribly punish you. Terribly punish you! Do you still want to buy me, Krikos? Do you still want to buy me? Do you still want to buy me? Mark my words, Krikos, mark my words. Soon, you have to let go. With the sound of men and women crying. Cities grieving. So your son done buried before the world of seen. Curses will be hard to watch you. These are my arrows, Creon. They're all for you. But come, child. Take me away from this. Get out of my sight. You can't understand the sandal of fire, young man. And now, we shall graciously carry this light. 